Hello, everybody. Um, this is kind of a very unplanned show here. I was prepping for uh, a SmackDown review coming up, but uh, in the middle of SmackDown, we had a uh, a number, a number of SmackDown. Uh, sorry, not SmackDown. NXT releases. Twelve active wrestlers and one referee. Um, we're here to break it down for you. As always, I'm your host Matt. With me, I have Ryan. I got the Wild Thing, Mike, Mike DeShazo. Um, it's late on a Friday, and we don't typically tape here, but we here doing it. Listen, um, I could be watching AEW Dark right now, and instead we have to talk about this depressing bullshit. Um, I don't understand the decision to release wrestlers in the middle of a show that you're doing. Or at least to announce it. In the middle it. of SmackDown. This happened at about 9 o'clock. Um, I want to tell you, uh, for those of you who watch SmackDown, right at the beginning of Street Profits versus Dogs. Um, and what was a great return for the Street Profits, uh, I, I just, uh, I'm going to have to go back and watch it before the review because there was no way I was going to be able to keep up with it uh, as all these releases drop. All these are uh, reported through Fightful. Um, they've been confirmed by many of the wrestlers themselves on Twitter. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go down the list here. Uh, and you're going to hear some names here you are going to be surprised about. Uh, mm -hmm. Bronson Reed was, I believe, the first thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Bobby Fish, Jake Atlas, Ari Sterling, Kona Reeves, Leon Ruff, Tyler Rust, Zachariah Smith, Asher Hale, Giant Zangier, Mercedes Martinez, and uh, Stefan Smith, who is the uh, black referee. Look, man, people aren't gonna recognize. If I just say ref, they're not gonna know who I'm talking about. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, um, if you search him on Twitter, um, he is uh, well. His current profile pic picture was him in an NXT officials referee shirt. Um, but his last tweet, which was like within the last half a day, said we could have two black gold medal winners in WWE. Go us. So it shows how like blindsided a lot of these were. Um, well, to speak to that, uh, Alex McCarthy uh, talks for Talk Sports. Um, does wrestle daily. Uh, he literally, WWE just set him up with an interview with Jake Atlas two days ago. Two days ago, he was sent by WWE for an interview and he was released today. On, on his anniversary of being in the business also, five years. Um, I, I mean, that's just extra sprinkles there. But I, I don't understand a lot of these decisions. Um, like, oh, wow. Um, Cedric Alexander, actually. Sorry, I'm, I'm slightly going off script here. Put out that so much talent was just cut. I kind – oh, man. Yeah, uh, just, let's just pick it and just start rolling because it's gonna be it's gonna be a long period right here. Um, well, let's before. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll talk through this. Who do we think goes where? All of these wonderful things here. Uh, Bobby Fish. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think he goes back to Ring of Honor. Uh, mm -hmm. He stays. I would not be surprised if maybe Bobby Fish calls it quits. He's had a lot of injuries lately. Uh, maybe he makes due uh, on the indie circuit. Maybe he goes back and coaches uh, for Ring of Honor. Um, but I think Ring of Honor is probably a really good spot for him. Yeah, he would be a great addition to just the locker room. He's a good in-ring uh, psychologist. I think he would add a lot to Ring of Honor. Um, um, if things play out maybe and he and he's a hundred percent healthy i could see him maybe getting a run uh for a couple matches somewhere else maybe in new japan but we'll see uh i'll be real i want to see bobby fish in the pr division that would be fucking excellent that would actually be really perfect for him because if he's even if he's not healthy even if he's not a hundred percent he can still work the mat 100% he's going back to Ring of Honor. 
It's kind of one of those ones you can be like, oh, that's written in the stars where he's going. Yeah, I think I think that's a pretty clear cut one. Bronson Reed, he's I think I believe he's gonna go back to his Jonah Rock name. Um, and I got to tell you guys, I think the best place for this man is Impact Wrestling. Um, I think he could be a star there. I think he has uh, the chops for it, and I think his in-ring work. He is someone who I think could easily be put at the top of that card. Uh, definitely some talent they need, especially uh, with, I think, the Kenny Omega story getting ready to uh, finish up here in the coming months. Yeah, he, in, in, in his post-release tweet, called out AEW, Impact, New Japan. Um, so I don't think he's signing anywhere. I think he's going to be a free agent and he's going to go wherever he wants to go because... Pull the Matt Cardona. He, I mean, he's 32. I mean, why wouldn't you want to kind of go where you want to go for yeah. a, a little bit and then sign your last big contract? Yeah, I mean, it's so we live in the era of the forbidden door, a revolving door right now. He could sign one place and work all of those places. I think he's one of the guys that will go to AEW. And you could honestly put him, I'd love to see him against Miro. I do want that matchup. I'm not going to lie to you. I do really want that matchup. I'm going to be honest with you, though. I don't think anyone on this list goes to AEW. I, you know, I, that might be a hot take here, but I don't think a single one of them. I got one that I'm pretty sure will. There is one that I'm confident is a good shot for it. Um, the only problem. You Mercedes Martinez. Do we want to get this out of the way now? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, yeah, really quick, quick though. Um, the for the forbidden door is open, but I, I don't think it's all will willy nilly as I think maybe sometimes we would like it to be. I think there's a lot of work that goes into it, and we've been this has been a thing since Kenny Omega won the title in December, so we're on month nine of the forbidden door, and we're just now starting to kind of get more talent through. So I think you know. Forbidden Door comes and goes as it pleases, but Tony Khan's a wonderful man. Um, all right, let's let's do Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, and you guys have both said you think she's AEW bound. Let me tell you why I don't think she is. Uh, she showed up there and did the battle royale, and then I believe like immediately signed with WWE right after. Um, uh, I don't think Tony's the kind of guy to hold grudges yet. He hasn't shown it. But I, I don't know, man. Not a whole lot of faith. I think for her, hit NWA up. NWA or Impact. I think those are the, probably the two good spots for her. Really, you could work in, in one and work in the other one as well right now. Um, but if you're NWA, I think you kind of want to bolster up that women's division a bit. She's a good alternative look there too. So looking at the timeline for Mercedes Martinez, um that was in august of 2019 where she was where she was uh the joker she had an appearance on dark and then didn't sign her wwe contract until late january um which was when she was in the battle royal for the women's championship um if not aw i think nwa would be a great spot for her since we're playing kind of devil's ad, uh, advocate here, I think especially her no compete clause won't be up by the time Empower rolls through. When's but um, I believe it's at the end of the month. Toward towards the end of the month, I'm not one one hundo. Let me double um, that real quick. You're good, but um, but I do I do know it's in August, and oh, if it's in August, then it's yeah. Um, I th- yeah. I still think that. If if she's with NWA, it kind of boosts that division a lot, I think. Especially with the and that women's division is slowly growing, whether through their own signings or by their partnership with everybody else. But I think wherever she goes, she's immediately 
going to boost whatever division she's she's in. So I got a wild card on Mercedes Martinez here. That's not AEW or NWA, not even a company in America. Maybe she goes AAA or CMLL. It's possible. I just feel like she had such a big run with Shimmer and everyone else kind of around the independent scene for so long. Mm-hmm. I feel like she's at this point where she wants to be signed to, a, to one company and kind of make that steady money rather than all around, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to do... <laughs> all right, Leon Ruff, I think will be great in the X Division. I'm ready for all the boo-hoos and the arguments with me. Put him in the X division where it's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. Don't push the guy as a joke right away. And let's have some really great friggin' matches. Have I sold anyone on this idea yet? No, because if if I don't see Leon Ruff on TV, it's a great day. Um, But here's, 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 here's the big point. Um, Leon Ruff is only 25. Okay. He's going to AEW because he's going to be the newest member of the Nightmare Factory. He's going to sign with them. He's going to he's going to develop his talent a little bit. I think honestly, and I know I give him a lot of crap because because he's not a believable kind of winner. I think just because of his stature. Um That's why X Division. <laughs> X Division is fine. Amazing Red did it back in 2004, 2005, but it's not 2004, 2005 anymore. It's 2021. Did you see everybody that was in the um, Ultimate X match? I did, and I would yeah. sit here and tell Trey you that Miguel's Kenny Williams there. is not super big. Mm. I would tell you that Ace Austin isn't over 200 pounds. I don't think Trey Miguel is over 200 pounds. I think I think um, there may have only been two people in that match over 200 pounds. One of them being the champion, Josh Alexander. Yeah. All right. You got me there. Um, but I will say this. I think long-term for his career, I think he's going to get buried in impact. I think he has a better chance of developing more and developing better if he signs developmental with AEW. See, I just feel like at this point, I don't know. Mike, go ahead. He's 25, though. That's the, he might be the youngest guy on this list. I can agree with Ryan on that, especially if what I believe AEW will do is bring in another mid-card title, which is the light heavyweight title, and they have those smaller guys who can work that division. Leon Ruff is another guy who could do that. I mean, he's, he works well in the ring, but he needs some polishing. And put him in a nightmare factory, have him working with those guys, PP, Dustin, Cody, when he's I, there. I mean, I think it works. I'm honest with you guys, I don't think his work is that bad. I just think he was put in a very rough situation on television. Oh, I never said his work was bad. I think his I work think is good, but if he's polished. It's, think, oh, it, it's okay. I just think it's just he needs time on TV. I think that I think the best place for him is impact, honestly. I don't see anywhere else where he would be beneficial, and AEW is getting a little bloated, especially with some new uh, signees coming, I believe. Um, If that is your viewpoint, whereas you think that his problem is he sees me on TV more, then, yeah, Impact's a good spot for him. Um, If not, maybe NWA would be a good spot for him, too, because their division is kind of small also. but. Yeah, they don't have a lot of competitors, mm. but he is so much smaller than everyone else on the NWA roster. Um, okay. Is, that would be is my there, concern. Is there a roster that he would be a part of where he would not be the smallest? Um, not necessarily the smallest, but in, in comparable size, Impact's X Division. <laughs> That's like it. That's the issue. I mean, you can maybe go to New Japan and try and work the, the Super Juniors, mm. but even that's a big old push. New Japan Strong would be nice. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that, that could be a good spot for him. There's, there's a lot of good size guys there that are comparable. Um, I just feel like if you want to showcase what you can do to the best of your ability, this dude is a pretty fantastic high flyer. He works very quick. Um, I can't recommend his matches and Evolve enough. Um, 
where he actually got to showcase a lot of his talents, uh, um, he could have so many great matches and impact, especially yeah. with a lot of older guys in the X division currently that I think are going to start aging out. Um, let, let's not forget he's engaged to a current WWE referee. They just got engaged at the end of November of last year, and you get your release. Congratulations. I mean, at this point, I, I, yeah. I can't. I can't. Uh, they they make it easy enough for them to be a target. We don't need to add anything more. Um, Ari Sterling, better known as Alex Zane, I believe, hmm. uh, on the independent scene. He was just signed nine months ago. <laughs> Sorry. Um, was, it's a joke. Oh, he he uh, he and Leon Ruff are also both promoted for 205 Live tonight. Um, so their last showing is today, currently. Um, they were released prior to these matches going on. I think I think he's an indie guy for sure. Agreed with Ryan on that one. Come on, Matt. So let me go honest. ahead and put over the Impact X division here. Uh, you can't. Look, okay. I know you can't send everyone. You can't send everyone. All right. <laughs> I'm with that. And I'm with that. Okay. Mm. But hear me out. How long is PD Williams around for? How long no, is Josh Alexander going to stay in the X division? How long is Trey Miguel and Ace Austin going to stay in the X division? You cross that bridge when the time comes because then with the X division, that time is, is now. Is like is like you said, it's not about weight limits, so anybody could be in the X division. I know, but you can move people up to higher spots on the card, and is I think you have happen? three guys going there. Mm-hmm. We've said forever on this show, Ace Austin and Trey Miguel are main eventers just waiting to happen. Josh Alexander has clearly established himself, in our opinions, as the king of the mountain. He's he's going to be the next challenger for Kenny Omega. In my you opinion. know, like you're absolutely right, but the but the problem with that is that Impact has other guys they want to push at the moment. It seems like, and it doesn't seem like that those those pushes are coming anytime soon. Um, let me also pull this up here. Also, his finisher is called the Taco Driver. I mean, yeah, yeah, Ryan. Well, I'm in only on that merit. Um, I don't, I don't really think he was given a whole lot of time to showcase what he had, which would fall right into your it impact was, plane there, Matthew. It was all on 205 Live. Can we, can we talk about Tyler Russ? Because I want to go the fuck in on this. Uh, you on. mean how he's going to go back to Ring of Honor for the Pure Division? Doing it, doing it for Pat. You put this guy in a brand new stable. You put him with uh, probably your next main main event guy. You put you put him with Roddy. You put him with one of the best mouth mouthpieces on NXT. You put him with Malcolm Bivens, and you and you hype this stable up for weeks on end, and then you actually give him a push. Like he's getting wins, and then you cut him. What are we doing? Okay, Tyler Rust was probably one of the better talents um, that we didn't get to see enough of. You know, and I just I just don't understand why why this continues to happen. It's absolutely terrible. And guess what? Guess how long he's been signed for? I'll give you a hint. It hasn't been a full year. It's been since the beginning of December. I would say it's been at least since after the Pure uh, Tournament, considering he was in it. And he's going back to New Japan. Guys, I would love for him to go to Ring of Honor into the Pure Division. Um. At this point, I don't know really what the what the budget's like for Ring of Honor, and that's my main that's my main issue right now. Um, it's can we afford to sign 
really anybody because we know that AEW can back up the truck. We know that E can back up the truck impact to some extent. Um, but Ring of Honor is just kind of in their own bubble, honestly. And I, I don't know if like who can, who they can afford. Um, and then they've just brought in Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Green also. So the budget's a little con- concerning, but I think either new, either back to New Japan or um, back to Ring of Honor would be great. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mike. I got, um, I got Russ going to strong, New, New Japan strong, especially after like what Ryan said about not knowing how much money Ring of Honor has because AEW has more money than WWE. And then WWE has more money than Impact. Impact has more money than Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has probably more money than NWA. So it's just like I think he's gonna end up in New Japan strong and then go to New Japan. When the time is right. That's me though. Um God. <laughs> I I'm sorry, I'm looking at this. Uh, Zachariah Smith, we never really got to see in ring action, so I don't really have a, a location for him. Um, Wendy's. I will say he is seven feet tall and gigantic. So a lot of places where he can go and yeah, probably his developmental before coming to TV. Um, he was a part of the same class as Mercedes Martinez, Jake Atlas, Top Dalla. Um, who else is in this? Uh, Emily Anzulis. Is that it? I feel like I'm missing someone here. Yeah, I'm missing someone here. Um, but I mean, I mean, he's been in the company since. Where's the date on this? Uh, since we're saying Martinez, so January of 2022. 2022? You went to the future there. Sorry, 2020. <laughs> it's, fr- it's Friday, and I wasn't planning on talking about releases. I'm sorry. Um, just to give you a moment to collect your thoughts, um, this is a tweet from Shane Taylor about 40 minutes ago. Talent can make teams great, but morale, trust, and loyalty build dynasties. Without the latter, the team will eventually lose. WWE's losing right now. So, Giant uh, Zanjir? Yeah, he was on... WWE India? Yeah, he was on the Superstar Spectacle. Yep. Um, Seven foot two, trained by Great Khali. There you go. Going back to India. He, he is prob- probably heading back to India. I- I'm not sure. It's going to depend on work visas, of course. Um, oh, he's and- probably already there. No, I think I think he was in the Performance mm-hmm. Center. Uh, Kona Reeves. Okay. Let me take two seconds on Kona Reeves here. Kona Reeves is someone who has been with NXT forever. Mm-hmm. And um, it's been reported that every time someone comes in for trainings, they always leave talking about how Kona Reeves is one of like the biggest shining spots whenever someone comes in for guest trainings and everything. He's constantly getting compliments and everything. Yes. Never put on TV. I don't know what this product is. So I'm saying I think he should go to NWA. I think between hey. his look, what we have seen in limited in-ring, uh, you know, televised in-ring experience, I think he works a pretty safe style that would that would show well in the NWA production room. Um, and I think any kind of questions with his character, because it is a taped setting, it leaves room for any retapings, anything like that. Um, so I think he is someone who would benefit from the production style of NWA. I'm ready for the hate on this one. Hit us with it. 
get it with the Nightmare Family. Not Listen. everyone can go to EW. <laughs> You're right. You're right. But let's sign Brian Danielson and CM Punk. That'll help. Uh, that, yeah. that is yes, they will. Butts, that is to help butt butts and seats for this for the short term. Um, this is ratings. to build. This is no, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Though it's putting butts in the seats in the short term. It's exactly what I'm saying. This is a long term build here, guys. Okay. So far, I have Tyler Rust and Leon Ruff going to AEW. Okay. Kona Kona Reeves is 30. I actually oh know I missed God, he is only 30. I misspoke. Not Tyler Rust. Leon Ruff and only Kona Reeves going to AEW. Okay. To your point, the problem with him has always been that he's that he can't that he can't stay healthy. This is a great opportunity to get in the ring, prove you can stay healthy, shake off the ring rust. And be on dark and be on dark, dark and elevation. I mean, he was trained by the wild by by the wild Samoans. Like that has to speak for something. He's a big cat. Um, he reminds me a lot of uh, Punishment Martinez in a way when he when when he was thirty. So I, I'm a I'm a big developmental Kona Reeves guy. Um, I think dark and elevation are a great way to kind of get back on TV without getting back on TV. I am, uh, I'm with Ryan on this. Uh, I look at it like a, a lot like Cesar Bonone, where it's, it's a guy who needs to develop and be put in a stable. And Kona Reeves is one of those guys. Like he's a guy i mean it's very similar to cesar bernone and cesar bernone is doing great and he's on yeah I mean, everything for EW. i'm not arguing that uh, here's i guess my other thing it is is that i think this is going to have a very negative reaction in terms of some other things that we're going to talk to as soon as we get through this 12 <laughs> oh excuse me Bless Bless you. You. thank you have we done jake atlas yet nope x division <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, Matt, because he'd be great there. <laughs> Matt, I really like this back and forth we're doing where you put everybody in impact. I got and one then, more person too. And then Matt you is think, pushing the X Division tonight. <laughs> and then you think that I stick everybody in AEW. And I'm just here like, yo, uh, I think this is where you're going. <laughs> All I'm saying. Let's get this 2006 X Division thing going again, where they have the most incredible matches every single effing night of the week. And we can phase out a lot of this older talent who at this point either need to be moved up the card or maybe it's time to move on. Um, There's a lot of talent and impact that I do love to see, that I'm very excited to see. And there's a lot of talent that are in their dying days. Interesting. Um, and, and I'm cool if you move them into other positions, but we have a, a tag team division that we kind of need to bolster up. We can really bolster oh, up this X division. Mm. And there's a lot of guys here who could be main eventers if you move them from one of the things or the other. Yeah. Let's make Impact great again. <laughs> so I will say he needs to go to Impact. Jake um, Atlas to Impact? Jake, uh, Jake Allister. Yeah! <laughs> Um, they got list the impact. Um, the and, we will take a, and we will take a guess on how old Jake Atlas is. Jake Atlas is like 29. Bro, he's 26. Think about long, long term what that what that could do for impact. The guy can go. Okay. I he don't understand. So so many incredible young talent were released tonight, and I do not understand it if we were making such a youth movement. Um, um, I, got, I, right. I have a, a statement on that, but I really want to get through these names first. So here's my thing. It's going to be a hot take. Take it for what you will. Um, Jay, I feel like Jake Atlas would have been in the last round of releases had it not been for one, for one specific reason. And I think everybody could put two and two together here. Um, look, I'm, I'm serious. We, he hasn't been on, he's been on TV 
um, he teamed, he teamed with, with Mercedes. Uh, yeah. 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 It, honestly, he would have been in the last batch of releases, I think. And I think they didn't want the heat for it, so they just put him and 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 Mercedes in this in this set of releases. And that is not my opinion. Now, that is not my personal feelings or opinion. I don't want to get that twisted, but that's how WWE operates. They do not care. They just released 12 people during an episode of SmackDown. Like they like they didn't mean anything. Take it for what take take it for what you will, guys. Now I could go and say there is one company that is on the forefront forefront of inclusion in the biz. And that is AEW. But I do think that you know, Jake Atlas is gonna end up in impact. I think that's that's the proper spot. He's right. gonna be fantastic in impact. Yes. I mean he's awesome to begin with. He's twenty six. So can I sell you on my last person to impact here? Go ahead. Sell us. Mr. Hale. You might know him better as Anthony Green from his time in Evolve. Uh, look, 5'10", 180. I highly recommend his matches. He's had great ones with Leon Ruff and Evolve. Um, I think he works a really good X Division style. I think in Impact, there's room to move up the card. But a lot of who they, a lot of who was released tonight, I could see doing great work in the X Division. <laughs> and I Do think you know. he's another one. He's Now he's 36. There you go. He's 36. So he's been wrestling for a really freaking long time as well, though. Um, so he was signed in January. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> We had the oh. interview Jake Atlas two days ago. I don't so, even think that it, that interview's been released yet, and Jake Atlas has been released. So <laughs> he was ranked in the top 150 of the top 500 two years ago. Um, take that for what it's worth. Um, he's from he's he's from Georgia. So, um, I'm gonna use that, put two and two together. He's going to NWA. Um, I'd be cool with that. Um, he's worked with bigger guys, so size is not an issue. Um, he's been tag team partners with JD Drake for pretty much his entire indie career, which I am a huge fan of. Um, and I mean, he's th- I mean he's thirty six. Okay, NWA currently has Tyrus employed, so I don't think age is an issue. Speaking of Tyrus, he did something. We'll talk about that uh, on a future date. I don't know if that's been shown or not. I can't remember. Funk, Funk is on the rise. I mean, it's, it's all over their Instagram and Twitter. So <laughs> we'll talk about that. Funk is later. on the rise. Uh, Funk is on the rise. You know what? There's time for though. You know what oh, could no. happen. I, have we covered everyone here? Bob Fish, Bronson Reed, Jake Atlas. The referee, Art. where's he going? Home. He's gonna he he'll he'll find somewhere, hopefully, because he was actually, in my opinion, one of the better referees in, in NXT. He can go to AEW so they can take Rick Knox off of TV. No, guys, awful. Rick Knox Rick Knox is a storyline ref. He, he is. needs to be he's, listen, he's a, young if he's a story ref. if he's a storyline, then he needs to go full Nick full full Nick Patrick. <laughs> Which I'm cool with. And um, don't do it at all. But Kona Reeves, Leon Ruff, Tyler Rust, Zachariah Smith, Asher Hale. We got them all. Zangier and Mercedes. We did all of them. Yeah. You know what could be a thing now yeah. since everyone's been released? We could make a stable of Kurt Stallion, August Gray, and Tyler Rust <laughs> that we could promote as the future of a company. <laughs> a bunch yeah, of guys different. who could hostily take over. Kurt I'm not a gainer at all. Listen, Kurt Stallion is going to be at Next Generation Wrestling Tennessee's on Civil War 6, nextgentn.net to get your tickets. Fire right, tickets. I, I don't know if you knew this. We had a creative control where we drafted. I drafted yeah. this stable from NXT hilarious. of young guys to take over Monday Night Raw. 
and they like half of them were released like two days later. <laughs> yeah, you're the bearer of destruction. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, everyone I draft gets fired. That's what we're learning. So I'm not excited for the next time we do a draft. I almost feel like we almost need to redraft. Like to this point, like. But here's the thing: by the time we do it, there's there's gonna be another cut. So, all right. First things first. Uh, God, I don't know if we haven't even talked about this on the WrestleCast. Uh, John Cena recently talked about how WWE can't keep going back to uh, older talent to sell tickets. It doesn't leave for a very stable WWE. And tonight we saw the cutting of many younger talent. I, Nick Khan does not care. So I, I, I'm not sure if this is Nick Khan or not, but he is definitely going to be the name attached to it. Him and Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace was the one who was poorly sent out all of the messages to release them. We'll have more, I'm sure, in the next 24 hours on how these releases happened. Mm-hmm. If it's anything like the Bray Wyatt release or anything else, it was via text message. Um, so there's another person who's involved and making these cuts. I cannot remember the her name for the life of me. But I know I heard it on Wrestle Talk. It's it is a woman who used to run a mm. There's your problem. Yeah, and they are her and Nick Khan are very much about whatever it takes to make a profit. Yeah. Um and I I say there's a problem, not because I'm a sexist a- asshole. I say that because the big thing, the big, the big thing surrounding Nick Khan and this, you know, mystery woman that we don't really care to look up the name for because she's obviously a horrible person. Um, they do not want to be in the red. That's 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 the point. So when we talk about, as we talked about it on Thursday and even Monday on on the WrestleCast, where we have these expiring contracts with these big name and NXT guys, you know, and things like this are constantly happening. What is this? The third or fourth of large batch of releases this year. Oh, it's more than that. I couldn't even tell you. So then why am I putting faith in a company that could release me at the drop of a hat where I'm looking around the world, NWA employed their employees through COVID impact employed their employees through COVID Ring of Honor paid their employees through COVID and they didn't even, and they made content from home, you know? And so, and then a, AEW ran, ran shows the entire time, didn't cut anybody. So you look at WWE and they're trying to sign you long, long term to a new contract and they're releasing people left and right. And then you look around the world where companies aren't releasing their, in, their, their embracing kind of what's going on in the world and we're not just cutting people to make a dollar because WWE is not professional wrestling guys and I think some sometimes I know we're a, a podcast and we're a brand for professional wrestling and we and we talk about it but WWE is sports entertainment With all that. elite wrestling is professional wrestling impact wrestling is professional wrestling New Japan pro wrestling okay so when they release guys like this, yeah, it sucks a lot. But you know what? Ble- blessing in disguise. Um, I was reading Mojo. I-, I was reading Mojo Raleigh's tweet on it. Like, yeah, getting released sucks, but this this presents you new opportunities in the best era to be a professional wrestler. That's as simple as that. Went on a tangent. I apologize. Man, okay. Sorry, not sorry. Look, I, I'm gonna come back to you because I do have a lot of statements on that. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony Khan does not give a single care in the world. Good. An hour ago, thank you everyone who supports AEW. We've had incredible support every Wednesday, and thank you for your uh, continuing support of Dynamite on uh, TNT. We can't wait to launch Rampage exactly seven days from today, <laughs> next Friday, Friday the 13th. See you in a week capitalizing on all of the horrible things that have happened. Um, 
<laughs> Trey Miguel already talking about uh, <laughs> Ari Sterling coming over. Um, Santana says it's going to be a very interesting year. Um, the cabin <laughs> Stallion, Stallion Rogers was maybe my favorite one. To all my buddies that just got released, the water's fine. Jump the fuck in. Beautiful. Um, Captain Sean Dean quotes Langston Hughes. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, I'm, I mean, trying eight, to look, go, I think. go ahead, Matt. Um, God, Kushida even like was going on. Um, Oh my God! Um, uh, a big thing here to look at is uh, these are all NXT contracts, which means they should only have a thirty-day no-compete clause, uh, which means September sixth. Anyone else thinking now why they did it today and not yesterday? Yeah, uh, all out. It would have it would have been up in time for all out. My yeah, bad for party. <laughs> Yeah, but they're but they're but they're not competition, are they? No. And look, I, I want to tell you, I think the last time they made cuts, it was a Friday, because Kurt Stallion had a match, or August Gray, one of them had a match on Two Hundred Five Live. It was August Gray. Um. J- Jake Atlas, man, Jake Atlas got. That's a big one. I. I, I... Okay, look, I, I am I am doing this. I'm doing this. I wasn't going to, and now I am. Do it. Man, like, think of well, how much they plastered everything with him and Stephanie McMahon on Undercover Boss. Yeah. Jake Atlas talking about becoming the first openly gay WWE champion. Like, I mean, Darren Young. Or Phil I, Rouser, excuse me. They did a big F you to Jay Atlas. Jake Atlas. They don't care. It's 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 a how can I use you kind of situation. Here's another great reminder: Vince McMahon, over uh, about a week ago, maybe we can give them more talent, and then cuts twelve more twelve more people on his roster after cutting. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Uh, um. So here is ultimately, I think, where I want to take this now. How do we think this affects the potential re-signings of Adam Cole Mm -hmm. and Pete Dunne at this point? Sorry, I kind of talked about it already. I jumped the gun. No, you're good. I mean, obviously, I am not either of them. But Bronson Reed getting cut and Bray Wyatt getting cut Sends a pretty clear message to me. Um, Bronson Reed was champion like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And Bray Wyatt was one of the impressive individuals. In the company. Bronson, Bronson Reed faced Adam Cole. Match with Adam Cole on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bronson Reed was set for a main roster call up. <laughs> he was just doing dark matches over there. Um, so, so I guess I also need to hesitate because I don't know if there are people who asked to be released. I, I don't know that yet. I don't know if that is something that has happened or if these releases just kind of came out of nowhere and we're, we're getting to call it budget cuts. I'm not sure. Um, obviously, as that information comes out to us, we'll talk about it on Monday. Um, but uh, can, can anyone spin this in a way that would make you re-sign with WWE if you're Adam Cole or Pete Dunn? Um, nah. I can. Yeah, you can? Mm. We've got more money for you now. So... The only uh, thing is that they, they've, they've had the money. I mean, it, it's, been, it's been a record profit year for them. I know. Last year was too. And then they broke so, that record this year. So... I'll say this, and you've been on this train since the jump, Mike, about the rumored 
the uh, sorry the heavily rumored um, WWE sale to NBC, which is not um, which is not kind of fruition yet. Um, it's only it's only talks as of right now, just rumors. Um, but you know, you've been on it where you know every time there's a, a bunch of releases like this, you're you're on it, and you're, yeah, sales coming, and it it, it it makes a lot of sense. You know, the more you piece it together, like the bigger names with the bigger contracts or the potential big contracts. You know, either Bronson Reed would have wanted a little more money to be on the main roster. He's another one who you see here and you go like, he's perfect for the main roster. His entering work is fine, but he's not someone who does a bunch of crazy stuff. He's great in ring. He's big. You know, I just, I, I, you're right. I don't, I don't understand do these all. decisions. So, <laughs> dovetailing off of what Ryan said, it's like I've been saying, like a lot of people are like, they're going to get sold to Disney. I'm like, but they just signed that huge contract with NBC, Peacock Network. They have their network. They're going to have to figure out what they're going to do with Fox, obviously, but. USA falls under that umbrella of the peacock. And it's just like, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world. Unless they just swerve us. Can you, I, I, I would need to look into who actually owns what. Um, and obviously this is way over professional wrestling in terms of, of uh, I guess, the original discussion here. But I mean, yeah. I can confirm that USA is under the Peacock because um, for me, being a huge Premier League soccer fan, yeah. the, um, the days that they have multiple games, like their big days, like Boxing Day or the last game of the season, first games of the year, their games on USA, they're on the Peacock as well. Well, what I was going to ask is, is Fox, Fox is partially owned by Disney too, right? Yes, they did buy it, but they don't like acknowledge it because of the news yeah yeah, because the brand name and everything what i was going to ask is there any stupid stupid way that tgv gets bought out by espn they're under i think i think i think they burnt that bridge they're under i think they i think they burnt that bridge when they chose fox here here's my thing on this ESPN's owned by Disney. Yep. Yep. They're all partially owned by Disney. Originally, I was sitting here going, is there any way we're going to end up seeing wrestling pay-per-views on Disney Plus? But if if you're owned by Disney, it would make more sense to buy it under the Disney brand and then put it on ESPN Plus uh, just to further their sales of, of their show. I mean, think about this. I mean, if you, uh, like, just look at what they're doing with with UFC in terms of of uh, their sales. I mean, they're they're giving you a, a price cut to buy the shows if you're an ESPN Plus member. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's something like thirty five dollars instead of fifty five, or you have to be an ESPN Plus member uh, to get the pay per view unless you order it online. Um, I. I could see Peacock being it, but I I think right now, A, they're doing so much more to appeal to Fox for SmackDown. And I, I just I just see that one being the bigger cash cow, like the bigger consumer here. Um and yeah. go ahead, sorry. No, no, I was just gonna say, like this is it, it's something I'm going to have to do some research in because I, I I can't sit here and tell you guys and anyone who's listening in on this that I am super well scripted and, and know everything about, about TV deals and stuff like that. Um, but just, just with how they represent SmackDown in comparison to Raw, it shows in the ratings that it's the better show. It's on the better night, I think, as well currently. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that's affected when we have sports again in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm, I've always said that Friday nights suck for SmackDown just because uh, high school football. I think that's a lot of your demographic, your dad's there. But, I mean, maybe that's not your key demo anymore. Um, I guess Monday nights suck because of Monday night football. Yeah, Monday night football with the NFL also sucks. <laughs> but but uh, I, I just I, – I feel like they're doing so much to appeal – to Fox right now that I almost feel like they would sooner sell to Fox or slash Disney for that. I definitely see the NBC Peacock deal with how they've set everything up there. Mm. Um, but I also got to think the fan backlash would have some kind of input. I wonder if you would see maybe massive stock sells or something along those lines. Mm. Um, I will comment with this and then I'm good. Um, is that the Fox deal rolls through October of 2024 because they just signed that deal right before, right a couple months before COVID hit um, where they are obligated through that deal to do two hours of live event programming every week for the year. Um, you know, what, what that means long-term uh, is up in the air, but Nick Khan is on record saying that they have a wonderful relationship with Fox and the Fox executives, um, there's nothing that they're going to do to rock the boat. It just feels like it's way more they're trying to appeal to Fox, I feel, than NBC. I feel like NBC was just the easy deal of getting rid of the WWE Network. Sell them while the money's good. I'm not sure. I, I will, yeah. guys, I, I will do some research this weekend. Uh, when I finish moving and hopefully I can be back here on Monday and give you guys a, a better conversation on that. Um, so I think this also leads into, we got to think this is going to lead towards less people signing with the E here. Yeah. Look, there are other options and this is not some, this is not a first that we've said on any of our platforms. This is not something that's brand new to the world as far as, other wrestlers that have recently been released saying, hey, the grass is greener. There are so many other promotions out there. God, Nick, uh, sorry, Matt Cardona just beat Nick Gage weeks ago. And he's the new GCW world champion. Okay. That would have never happened had he still been with the E. Okay. Now, granted, that's a release and not a signing, but you have to look. These guys that are – okay, um, Tyler Rust, a great example. Okay. He just got signed, what I say, in December or January? Yeah, okay. on that line. He's, he was on TV in a stable getting a major push, and they released him. Wednesday. Yeah, and they released him. So, yeah, if I'm any free agent, if I'm anybody looking to – look, the only reason I'm going to WWE is so, is so I can make money. If I want to make money, if I, if I want to make a tremendous amount of money, I'm going to go go there. But at the same time now, if, if I'm a bigger name, I can go to AEW, and I know that the Khan family has money. So, it, it, I mean, it's – and I get to wrestle. I, I get to be a professional wrestler. Um, I'm depressed. Yeah, I mean a little bit. Um, and God, this is just another thing here where uh, I'm gonna have to do some counting, uh, as well as adjusting our contracts situation Discord, um, because it's becoming like a biweekly thing here. Um, so to uh, dovetail off what Ryan was saying about money. And if you sign with anyone besides the main roster of WWE, you can still Twitch, you can still YouTube, you can still do mm -hmm. uh, Patreons or OnlyFans if you want to. Or, I mean, there's other ways you can make money. Cameos. Um, <laughs> and if you were to sign with, let's say, AEW, who has... Mm -hmm. The cons have more money than the McMahons. They have about five billion more dollars than the McMahons as we speak. They own 
Fulham FC. They own the Jaguars. They own AEW. I mean, there's more money in what the cons are doing. But you go to WWE, you get that bigger upfront contract. You get a, let's say, AEW, and you can work everywhere else. You can also do all your side gigs, which then catch up. That's my opinion. Um, looking at the updated SummerSlam card, I'm not going to get into it, but you have six matches that are announced right now. You have one part-timer, two part-timer, three part-timers. Three out of the six matches involve part-timer old guys. That's not counting the match that has Rey Mysterio in it. You know, so for the sake of getting a better opportunity, Christ, why would you sign with WWE? Seriously. We have so much young, fantastic talent, and we sound like a broken record. I know we do. But you you hit a brick wall here, and and it's so frustrating. You have Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg. Who the Frick cares about Goldberg in 2021. And if you're in the raw crowd and you're cheering for it, you are as much of the problem as, as WWE is. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. Yeah. If you're cheering for Goldberg in 2021, I'm upset with you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. You, sorry. You are that? part. You are part Uh-oh. of the problem. Oh, <laughs> we're not done. We're not done. They released oh, Goldberg. Breaking nope. new. <laughs> Desmond breaking Troy news? was just released. Wow. Um. <sighs> <laughs> I was just about to say, let's start wrapping up, but like, no, <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> WWE is gonna WWE. I guys talk for two seconds while I get a phone charger because now my phone's dying. So Ryan, uh, yeah, do you remember watching Goldberg and WWE or WCW when he debuted? When they what? When he debuted in WCW. Um, I don't remember that far back. Okay. But it, no. it's... It's still a very... Like I said, I will always say that the very first memory I can remember watching wrestling is a formerly WWF, now WWE, was Lex Luger slamming Yokozuna on that aircraft carrier. But then the next thing I can vividly remember is... For someone like me who's 35, Goldberg still strikes a chord, but now I don't want to see him outside of it's a nostalgia pop. It's mm-hmm. much like I said about Juve and Chris Jericho, nostalgia pop. You no, know, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him burying guys now. I just want to see him like show up and do that cool entrance. But other than that, I don't want to see him. So, he can't even do the jackhammer. His jackhammer is just suplex. Yeah. Um, I think the frustrating part for me is, you know, you have people that are just as upset as we are, and they'll turn around, and on Monday night, you'll you'll hear the Goldberg theme, and you'll absolutely lose your damn mind. You know, there is a difference b- between, you know, being being a fan and like being a journalist okay jeff hall will vehemently be on this show and slander the wonderful name of guys like shog d and rich swan okay but guess what he'll go to that show that they're on and he'll be in the front row and he'll boo the crap out of them okay that's being true to yourself now these now those same people Okay, will will complain about guys like Ricochet not getting a chance, 
Cedric Alexander not getting a chance, and turn around and Goldberg, dun, 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 um, dun, dun. And those are the same people that cheer their asses off for him. You got something, Matt? Oh, just the mention of Shug D. Um, I love Shug D. Pineapple? Shug D and I. Shug D and I. An hour ago. I'm looking at that list and I'm torn up. Some of y'all just got there, but I tell you what, don't for a second act like y'all ain't got options. Take your time, feel how you need to feel, then come out swinging. <laughs> come to next generation wrestling. Um, Look, and some of them will. And, and I can't wait to see them, but like... <sighs> so, um, 205 live results. Um, Leon Ruff defeated Grayson Waller. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Kushida defeated Ari Sterling. <laughs> Guys, I don't, I don't know if you figured it out yet, but. The things that are going on within our own world are scary enough. Okay. <laughs> like, this happens um, when WWE wants to do it. Here is, here's a follow up here from John Alba. Having gotten a message from uh, NXT talent um, throughout the night, they're still signed. They are shocked. There's disappointment. There's uncertainty. Um, I just don't know, man. I'd like somebody to try and explain this to me, but I know it's not going to matter. It's not. And as much as I hate to say that, and it's like, oh, well, you want to make a statement. You want to, you know, have your voice be heard, you know, you know, Go and like go and you know go and send your complaint in. Nobody cares. They're gonna do what they want. You know, stop wa- stop stop watching. It doesn't matter. Vince is gonna put on TV what he wants to watch. The only thing, the only pleasure you get out of it is you're not watching the programming. You know, so doing doing neither of those things helps. What helps is watching AEW every week, going to watch other professional wrestling where people actually love their jobs and like being professional wrestlers. And that's not to say that guys, you know, like Roman Reigns, Rhea Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, um, Seth Rollins, they don't love coming into work every day. Seth Rollins is a company man until the day he dies. You know, but... You know they're coming to they're they're coming for a job. They're coming to work their job. You go to AEW and they're going to be a professional wrestler. In my eyes, there's a difference there, and it it shows with the with the on with the on screen product. I I can sit here and I can toot the horns of AEW, and I think it's very easy to. Um, I can go do Impact Zone if you want. <laughs> I thought that was Matt's job tonight. Well, I want me to toot NWA's horn? I can do that. Uh, here's here's what I'm gonna get at though. New Japan Ring of Honor. No, no, because no, because here, here's I, I guess ultimately what this guy come to. I guess tonight's the night where I I put on my Jeff Hall hat. Uh, you're Matt Lilly. I know, but I'm about Embrace to be a here for two minutes. Embrace AEW, the dark side. I, I love AEW. I sit here weekly telling y'all how much I love AEW. Here's the issue. I love them. They, re- they regularly have mess-ups. They do. Mm-hmm. They do. Here's the thing. The bar has been set so low. AEW just has to step over it. It's not hard mm-hmm. to do, 
but I, I, I don't want to say that we have been starved of content that, that's preferable, but literally all AEW has to do is listen to the fans occasionally and, and they're going to get rave reviews. I mean, we sit here and, and we talk about cult fans that every company has um, and God, AEW has some idiot fans. I, I love AEW. I come on here weekly and defend most things that they do, but they got yeah. some dumb fans. Like if you're going to sit here and tell me, uh, God, what was one of the stupid ones I've seen? Um, uh, something like Christian's better than Edge. Like, nah, man, I like Christian. He's not Edge. Um, oh, man, there was something really, really dumb. I can't remember what it was, but it, there was one where I literally went like, this is the guy that Jeff is talking about all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wasn't it the thing about a uh, uh, Camille? No, I mean, that was definitely something. Mm-hmm. Like, people just didn't even know. <laughs> The NWA champion's name, which, like, you know, we got to educate the masses. But yeah, like, yeah. that's our job. The bar has been set so low. And there's just, when things like this are happening at a monthly, bi monthly rate, mm-hmm. it makes it so hard to be excited about anything for WWE. Um, and Guys, I, summer sh- summer slams in two weeks. Is anybody excited? Look, I'm excited to be there and watch it with friends, um, COVID permitting. But <laughs> like, here, here's the thing: it's, it's not even that. It's not even that. I I couldn't sit down and watch SmackDown <laughs> tonight without have to without getting messages of releases um I, this is a behind the curtain thing i sat down i took notes i was ready instead of taping this show right here i was gonna tape the smackdown review for the podcast world order of course other things have come up i'm gonna have to do that tomorrow now but <laughs> i couldn't sit down and watch smackdown without wwe sabotaging itself Like, it's such a small thing, and maybe it is because I am a hardcore fan, and we frequently talk about the difference of which companies is working for the hardcore or the casual fan, um, which is, God, something we're going to really dive into here in the coming weeks uh, on who is catering to what, because I think there is some very telling signs, uh, particularly with who they book for their promotions on their big shows here. Um, I'm like, I think you've already put this one out there before in the Discord. So I'm going to have to have you on the show when we do this conversation, but it, it's, it makes it so hard. It makes it so hard. There have been 13 releases tonight. Um, I, I can't remember how many releases there were in July. I can't remember how many there were in June. There were only two releases in July. I think it was just Bray. Or was that August? Bray was August. There may have been no releases in July then. All right. Here, here, here. Jesus. All right. So we got to do a month by month breakdown here. Ric Flair was released in August. Bray Wyatt, July 31st. Killian Dane, Kurt Stallion, August Gray, um, Marina Shafir, The Bollywood Boys, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Arturo Ruiz, Tony Nice, um, Arya Davari, Ever Rise. Uh, we're, 2.0! All, we're all June 25th. 2.0. Here's why I thought this. Because on June 2nd, Braun Strowman, Alistair Black, Buddy Murphy, Lana, Ruby Riot, Santana Garrett were all released June 2nd. May 19th, Jessamine Duke was released. May 19th. Andrade was released. Jessamine Duke was quietly released on May 19th. I don't even remember and getting released. Jessamine Duke is probably going to do nothing but her uh, Twitch from here on out. And May then, 19th. Do whatever you want. But, like, legitimately, I remember sitting here, like, 
they got rid of Marina Shafir and, and now Justin Duke. Apparently, she was already gone, and I didn't even know. Uh, Andrade, <laughs> March 21st. Lars Sullivan in February 20, uh, 2021. Steve Cutler, February 4th. Samoa Joe was released and then rehired in April. Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, Mickey James, Chelsea Green, Tucker Knight, Kalisto, Bo Dallas, Wesley Blake were all in April. That's mm. just this year alone. Insane. They don't care. Legitimately, what are we doing? What are the rules? <laughs> Z- Zelina Vega was released and then rehired. Um, the first rule work. <laughs> released in September. Miro released in April of 2020. God's favorite. Velasquez family. released in April. Zach Ryder. I, I, since COVID has started, since last April, an incredible amount of talent have been released. The first rule of working for WWE may make gonna, sure you don't may make sure you don't buy buy a house. They're gonna tie in releasing talent with hitting record numbers. It, last year they hit record it's numbers, and this year they're hitting record numbers. Um and, and Brian Zane put this out there like, man, they've released a, a scary amount of talent this year alone, but essentially since COVID, and they still have a bloated roster. And that doesn't include the contracts that have run out, like Brian Danielson. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's a whole nother bag of worms here, but that that is just a mm. terrifying amount of wrestlers. Um, God bless it. I, I don't even know. Obviously, we want nothing but the best for the talent. I hope this is an opportunity for so many of them to get booked moving forward. Um, get the opportunity to get on television, get the opportunity to get the screen time that they deserve. Cause this is, like I said, this is a very talented group of wrestlers that have been cut here. Um, sorry. Um, Alex Zane for formerly known as Ari Sterling um, on his Twitter an hour ago had him coming out to do a vibe live and then banning over. And he's like, yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> like, um, it's so funny, and I think it was Kurt Stallion or August Grade that that was set for two hundred five live, and was like, "Well, this match is now set for a loser leaves town." And I want to tell you, I think he was facing Asher Hale, who is now gone. Probably, I want to say it was Gray because he appeared on AEW Dark, didn't he? I don't think he's been on TV yet. Oh. It was dying. Shit. Um, hey, at least Wheeler Union no, got a win on he, Dark. He lost to Grayson Waller. What the fuck is this guy? Grayson, Grayson Waller? Mm. He's the guy who I have now twice been like, isn't that Asher Hale? That's twice uh. that I've done that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, I'm just happy that there aren't like hornets landing on me while I'm trying to talk to y'all or snakes there around and I gotta keep my cool away from them because I'm gonna suck. You this? better keep an eye out for your for your damn release papers from WWE. Oh, future endeavored, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> the greener pastor. A lot of people have been released this year. A <laughs> lot of people have been released since COVID started. Yeah. And and I will say a large number of them have gone on to do some great things. I'm. We've all been very excited to see it. Matt Cardone is obviously a big one. God's uh, favorite champion is a big one. Yeah, Miro. Miro is a fantastic one. Um, just um, really incredible talent. Hopefully going to have the opportunity to do some great things. Um, come September 6th, a lot of independent shows are hopefully about to become must-see television uh, or must just must-see in general. High spots. NGW. Yeah, NG oh dude, NGW's already already over it. Uh they've already put out a bunch of uh teases of people there. Um speaking of NGW, they announced Moose versus Calvin Tankman uh for Uncivil War. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, take my god money. 
I can't wait to see one of their shows when I don't have plans. I know. We're going to get you out there. Hopefully, I know. We're gonna come here, but, but September 6th is, is the date for the time being. Cod, I, I don't know if you've said it on here, but you said keep an eye on Bronson Reed's. Um, don't be surprised if maybe he has a 90 day just because he already started working some of those dark matches on the main roster. Yeah, uh, he has one confirmed dark match that was against Robert Roode, and then he had the other one um, against, oh, crap. Who was it? Um, Drew Gulak. There you go. Um, so keep an eye on that. I think that's something that's going to be very telling in that regard as well. Um, also, don't be surprised if a lot of the talent over here on work visas maybe ask for a 90 day no compete. Um, that gives them time to kind of prep their houses and everything. Buddy Murphy was someone who talked about it, uh, how he made sure August 30th was the date for him. He made sure that because that gave him time to square up his dogs, everything with his house, all of this. Hopefully, he's about to be in for a payday. I love it. We'll find out. But God, he'd be so good in Impact Wrestling as well. X Division, right? Not in their X Division as their world champion. Because Buddy Murphy is the best kept secret in the world. I've been hey, uh, guess what? Forever, forever. I've been on this train. Yeah. The um the uh, belt collector is gonna lose his first title this weekend. Market. He's gonna lose to Andrade at Triple A Mania. <sighs> you think? I think. Here, here's my only thing. He has already started pushing for a match with uh, uh, Son of Viking. I can't, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. I'm so sorry. I booked him in creative control Ooh. forever ago. Um, yeah. Um, so I know you're just rambling through the list, but since April of this year, 41 people have been released. Oh, we're so kind of put April in... of this year? Yeah. We're so off on that only 50. Of this year, yeah, um, and this is coming, and this is coming from Colby over at Fightful and Wrestle Zone. Um, that'd be one, two, three, four, five from SmackDown. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from Raw. The rest are NXT and developmental. Um, also. Uh, this this has been said, and I do also oh, kind of want to put this out there. No major cuts from NXT UK yet. Does Vince know NXT UK exists? I'm not oh. sure. I know we joke about that pretty frequently. Um, there is a theory that you're not going to see many cuts from NXT UK because you might see the revitalization of, of uh, England's independence. Uh, apparently a lot of independent companies there got shut down when NXT UK started. So definitely something to kind of look at from that perspective. But I, I hate saying this. We, we have to keep an eye on that because at some point this this release bug, I think, is going to reach them. There's a lot of talent over there who I think would do fantastic over on the main roster or over in NXT Florida um, who could have been drafted in a creative control that would have made their company fantastic. But, of course, releases have happened. Um, Priestley. Um, it... Blair Davenport. Yeah, Blair oh, Davenport. Sorry. Nah. Um, just something to kind of, I think, put in the back of your head as well. I think it is going to be very interesting to see how that talent in NXT UK gets treated. I don't know if we've seen any major cuts from there yet outside of the speaking out movement. So, something to... <laughs> Keep in the back of your heads here for, for coming up. September 6th right now is the start date uh, for everyone who's released today. Um, at some point, I will, I guess, produce my everyone who's been released uh, slash where everyone currently is contract-wise. Maybe that's something I will do uh, um... somewhere. Or, or if we ever open up the discord for people they can see it hey matt yes sir 30 days from today is sunday september 5th no i literally just put up a calculator it's uh the 6th of august right now 
Yeah, there's 31 days in August. I don't know if it counts today or not, though. It'll be interesting. I would, I, I would bet you, long. I would bet you, it's it's not till after All Out. But see, yeah. I don't know how much control there is over that. If it's a 30 day, like if it's down to the minutes, hours, and all that good stuff. But um, just for just for the record, though, uh, 30 that including days, today. Yeah, 30 days from today. Oh, uh, see, I think my something. thing did not include today. Mm. So maybe that is where I guess that's once again maybe something to keep an eye out on. Yeah, um, because trying to give us insight on the contracts. Yeah, because I'm telling you, there's going to be some type of battle royale um, come all out. All out. So typically, it's the women's one though. It all out. Well, Mercedes Martinez is going to be the Joker twice. Although Brian Cage. Was he all out? He might have been in the ladder match. He was in the ladder match. Was for the 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 casino chip, casino chip battle (laughs) royale. He was. Remember they Um, buried like Darby underneath all the debris. Yeah, I remember that match. I can't remember if that was that or double or nothing. Oh no! Last last year was the casino battle royale. You want to know why? Why? Because last year was the slip hurt around the world. Oh. The Joker was Matt, was Matt Seidel. And damn it, Nakazawa. <laughs> uh, All right, guys. So that's that's a lot of it right now. Um, oh, my God. 13 wrestlers released as of 11.33 on Friday night here, August 6th. Um, hopefully, we're not back here talking about more releases tomorrow. Or Sunday, or really even Monday. Maybe we're just hopefully we're not talking about releases for like a month. Can we take a but month off of releases? You get to see our beautiful faces. Um, September fifth slash sixth. Keep track of that. That will also give us insight on WWE's contracts if it does include the day that they are released or not. Um, God, just. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen here with NXT and just in W in general. 41 since April. Of this year. Of this year, of 2021. Since April, 41 wrestlers have been released. I do not want to see that number since COVID has started. That's terrifying. COVID 60. Um, it's more than that. I, I would not be surprised if we were talking maybe in the 100. Um because I want to tell you something like 30 people released that first set in April of last year. So obviously keep an eye out on that. A lot of incredible talent gone uh, Mm -hmm. from NXT. Very curious to see how this affects Adam Cole and Pete Dunn with their contracts, as well as I think we got to take a look at who else's contracts coming up by the end of the year. Um because we don't know who could be next at this point. I hate saying that, but I think it's just the truth here. Um, But God knows we've talked about this for so long now. Cod, if you don't mind, hit him with the plug, please. Guys, this is a YouTube exclusive, so you already know what it is. Everything's down in the description box for you. Go check out the splash page. Go check out our friend Tantalizing Tony. Um, Go check out nextgentn.net. Get those tickets for Uncivil War 6. Um, guys, support local wrestling, okay? Very, very safely, if I may add that on to my weekly um, thing here. You know, if, if, if you're in a jurisdiction, if you're in a locale that has professional wrestling live and it's back and you go to a tent, be, be safe, okay? Make sure you're wearing your mask if it requires you to wear your mask. If they're not, be safe, okay? And it, if you like this incredible content and you want to hear us rant more about guys being released and conspiracy theories and um, pretty much just whatever we want to talk, talk, talk about and um, give you a better hour and a half on a Friday night that SmackDown did in two hours, go to Kofi.com. So that's PWO123. It's as easy as 123. And for just the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can support great shows better than SmackDown just like this one. 
So, guys, that is it for the show tonight. Um, we'll see you back here on Monday, unless we have another, <laughs> unless we have another uh, news break here. So, thanks for joining us. Hope you'll have a safe, fun weekend. As always, stay healthy. Go watch Super Tag League this weekend. Super Junior Tag League. Keep shotgunning and keep stunting, baby. Shotgunning and stunning, baby. With that, guys, like we said, have a good night. Have a good morning if you're watching this in the morning because I'm realizing this is probably going to upload at like midnight. So uh, just be safe, guys. Appreciate y'all. See y'all soon. Love you. Bye.